Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuan. Today, let's get to know Perez the Macaroceratops. The Macaroceratops was relatively rare among Ceratopsian dinosaurs. We know that most Ceratopsians were huge, often reaching 6 meters long, and generally exceeding 4.5 meters or about 5 meters in length. For example, the Triceratops could reach 7 to 8 meters long. However, the Macaroceratops was small among Ceratopsians. At present, we don't know much about the Macaroceratops. Our knowledge mainly comes from a part of their skull. The most striking feature is the two curved sword-like horns on its head frill. Head fossils of the Macaroceratops have typical features of the Centrosaurus. The Macaroceratops had a relatively narrow head frill, with odd-looking structures on the top. The entire head structure was similar to that of a dinosaur called the Diabloceratops. Like the Diabloceratops, the Macaroceratops had two horns above the eyes, but unlike the Diabloceratops, these horns were much smaller in size, and quite different in terms of anatomical structures. The biggest difference was that this pair of ornamental horns were forward-pointing. Apart from the Diabloceratops, many dinosaurs in this group had common features, for instance, the Archilosaurus and the Arneosaurus had similar structures to horns around here, but no horns on the nose. Other Ceratopsian dinosaurs, such as the Medusa Ceratops, often had large and exaggerated ornamental horns around here. In short, Ceratopsians generally had strange looking structures on their head frills. But the Macaroceratops only had two of them which wasn't very common among Ceratopsians. Although no fossils of the front part of the Macaroceratops face have been found, we can speculate, based on its relatives, that it probably didn't have horns on its nose. It had a relatively large nasal cavity, although we've only found the rear part of its head frill, judging from its narrowness, the front part of its face would probably be narrow as well, and the two horns on the forehead would also be close together. Let's take a look at the details of each part of its head. First, look at its nostrils which were positioned not as close to the top as previously speculated. Instead, they were probably located closer to the bottom to prevent water from getting in. Let's imagine, if the nostrils were upward pointing, rainwater could easily get in. It was a bit like some rhinos seen today, such as the Sumatran rhinos, with a relatively large nasal cavity with downward facing nostrils it had huge nostrils with bulging soft tissues covering the surface creating more space inside next move on to its mouth people used to think that ceratopsians probably had cheeks on both sides of the mouth as we can see the beak on the lower jaw ends here the beak on the upper jaw ends here and the teeth are tucked in between when it closed its mouth, the two sets of teeth were relatively narrow. If its head was this wide, and its teeth were located here, we would probably relate to the position of our human teeth. As the bones at the back of the face were wide, cheeks would be necessary to hold food inside the mouth, which made sense. However, studies on the distribution of facial muscles of ceratopsians in recent years have shown that their facial muscles were connected in a different way from what people speculated. In the past, it was thought that if they had cheeks, the cheeks would be connected vertically, but today we know that the muscles on its lower jaw were connected to the back of its head frill through various foramens in the face. As a result, there were no muscles on the sides of the face, hence they had no cheeks. Like a lizard, they probably had a large mouth, fed like. Today's herbivorous lizards, and wouldn't be affected by the lack of cheeks. Although the Macaroceratops didn't have horns on the nose, it might have a large number of keratinous structures. Fossils of the eye sockets aren't well preserved. But judging from most Ceratopsians, we know that along the base of this horn, there might be a ring of protective bones around the eye socket. The shape of its head frill was very similar to that of the Diabloceratops or the Centrosaurus. The top of the head was relatively narrow, forming an overall shape of a trapezoid. Now, let's look at the body of the Macaroceratops. Actually, people only discovered a few fossils of the back of the head, the most clear of which was a cervical vertebra, which is of little help to our reconstruction of its body. 
but we can still infer the appearance of its body based on the shape of its head and its body features. First of all, let's look at it from the top. We can see that like most ceratopsians, its shoulders were narrow and its pelvis was wide, but not as wide as that of the Centrosaurus or the Chasmosaurus. As its head was extremely narrow, its body must have been in a certain proportion to its head. If it's to look coordinated, its body might have been narrower than some later ceratopsians. As a small dinosaur, its pelvis might not be particularly wide, because it didn't need a large pelvis to bear weight. Generally, dinosaurs had wider pelvises to bear larger weight. When walking, if the body was wider, the center of gravity would be more stable. The Macaroceratops was relatively small, so it might not have such features. Its pelvis might resemble that of the Centrosaurus, which looked long and narrow. It didn't have a long tail. Like most Ceratopsians, the ratio of its tail to its body was almost 1 to 3, the head, trunk, and tail were of equal length. Then, move on to its foot. Ceratopsians had five toes on their front foot. The inner three toes were used for walking, and the outer two didn't play a big role in walking, either lifted off the ground or slightly tuffing the ground. Its forelimbs were generally thin, which were located under the body. When drawing or making the body of Ceratopsians, it is easy to make mistakes. We tend to position the two shoulders on the outside of the body, but in fact its two forelimbs were located directly under the body. Dinosaurs were different from other reptiles anatomically, as their limbs were located under the body, a bit like mammals. Its pelvis was wide, with strong triangular upper legs, which were connected to the body at the front, and to the tail at the back via membrane. The Psittacosaurus, a close relative of Ceratopsian dinosaurs, had a similar hip structure, so we can use it as a reference when reconstructing Ceratopsians. It had four toes on its hind foot, the first toe being small, which played no role or supporting role in walking, sometimes touching the ground, sometimes not leaving a mark. It had a pad under each toe, and a large pad behind all three toes. The metatarsal bones of Ceratopsians, equivalent to the sole of a human foot, were quite short, which was typical of herbivorous dinosaurs. They couldn't walk very fast, and didn't need a long lever structure, so the metatarsal bones were short. They tended to have longer upper legs and shorter lower legs, which indicated that they were slow, walking animals. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Perez the Macroceratops. Thank you all.